Welcome to the Glenn Beck Program. Tonight, I'm going to share a novel concept with you. Tonight, I don't want to waste any time at all. we got a lot of work to do. Let's go. Hello, America. I want to have a serious conversation with you tonight because we're on the beginning of something that quite honestly, the more we dig into it, the more things that you see in the next week, um, um, it's going to explain everything. All of the pieces that we thought we were exposing one by one, um, we thought they were important, but now we're beginning to see the whole puzzle piece. We're beginning to see the whole picture. And as I told you last night, when um, some of these pieces started to come in, one of our producers who gets it, um, I think it just really hit home with her and I went over to her cubicle and she had tears in her eyes because she realized, as she said to me, what all of this means. It's one thing to say, hey, I think you have cancer. It's another to then get confirmation of it. We are calling this Crime Inc. You don't want to miss a single episode. Um, and I, I thank you so much for um, going out on the internet last night and finding so much stuff and sending it to us in our tip line. You will not believe what we are finding and all the thousands of tips we are getting. Please, when you find something on the internet, please do not send us a link. Um, you, you've got to burn some of this stuff to, um, uh, to a DVD. You can send us the hyperlink, but if it has been scrubbed or if it's been lost off the internet, we need screenshots and we need the actual video. So if you find it, please screenshot it and burn it to a DVD. Send us the link and we'll contact you if it's, been, uh, if it's no longer there. Now, in the next few days, in the next few weeks, um, if you know somebody who's on the fence, or if you yourself are not sure, I am not asking you to believe anything that I am saying. I am asking you to think about it. I am asking you to look at it. I'm asking you to explain it any other way. Because I'm not, I'm, in the next week or so, I'm not going to just roll out in Crime Inc. Um, just one thing. This is beginning to explain everything that is going on. And it is either the most elaborate set of coincidence or it is something else. And if it is indeed what we all believe it is, um, <laughs> I asked one of my producers today, how do you expose this and live? And he said, you better make sure it's right and take it down because you don't wound this. Explain it any other way. Tonight I want to go back a little bit and I want to just show you some of the people that we have talked about in the last year. Because if I think people have gotten numb and we're now able to put actions behind things that people dismissed. And, but I want to go back to some of the main players. For instance, a year ago, if I told you that there was a 9-11 truther in the White House, uh, or a communist in the White House, or somebody who was running our manufacturing section uh, that didn't believe in capitalism, or somebody who liked Chairman Mao, or somebody who wanted to legally limit free speech, or someone who wanted government operatives to infiltrate any group that disagreed with the administration. Government operatives. If I told you one of those people existed, it would have been a bad thing. And people would have done what people did with Van Jones. They stepped up. And Van Jones was not discredited. He was just moved. But if I told you these things in dribs and drabs because we were figuring it out at the time and spread it out over a year, America might become numb to what it really means. But if you stop for just a minute and you look at all of them and you have an umbrella that begins to show you what's coming and what's happening, you might have a slight different, slightly different view. Let me show you the umbrella, okay? Now this, granite Marie Strong will say this is for a novel that he was writing, but he has never written a novel. Um, uh, and Marie Strong is a, is a guy who is UN central and surprisingly involved in almost everything. This is what he said in 1990 in an interview. He said, what if a small group of these world leaders were to conclude that the principal risk to the earth 
comes from the actions of rich countries. In order to save the planet, this group decided isn't the only hope for the planet that the industrialized civilizations collapse. Isn't it our responsibility to bring that about? Okay, let me, let me just go over a few of these things. So what we're looking, this is a what if, and remember what we're talking about is a novel that has never been written all these many years later, and he's never written one, but it's a good novel. But words have power. We're looking for a small group of people. They've got to be global, a small global group of people. They have to believe, this small group of people, that there's a threat to the earth, a principal threat to the earth, which is that rich countries are the problem. A risk to the earth, and that risk is rich countries. Then they also have to believe that this group, they see this risk, and it's coming from the rich countries, and the best thing they can do, the only hope, is for the planet to collapse the industrialized civilization. Okay? So they have to collapse the system. Wouldn't it be our responsibility to bring that about? Okay, why would it be their responsibility to bring that out? Well, if you can't convince people of these things, then you've got to do it in a different way. And if you do it in a different way, then that means you need control. This is the thesis for what I'm going to be laying out. A little bit of it tonight, but over the next week. And America, you're not going to believe how all of the pieces fit. It is terrifying. And it is more than crime, Inc. Holy cow. Okay, so let's find the, the group of people. Okay? The, the group of people that believe in Cl Cloward and Piven because you've got to collapse the industrialized civilization. I mean, I don't even think I need to explain this one. Our deficit for April, it just came out, was more than $82 billion. That is four times more than the April deficit one year ago and two times more than what they projected in worst case scenarios, Cloward and Piven. But there's another way to collapse a system, to fundamentally transform it. To, if you're a system that has wealth and understands wealth and the free market, you just stop the free market and take away the, the wealth. But if you do that, you better do it quickly and you better hope that somebody doesn't begin to expose it. But if somebody does expose it, you better stop it. You better stop anyone, any kind of dissent. Control them. Because you're not just fundamentally transforming the country, you're transforming lives. Tonight I want to begin to introduce you to the ones you already know, all the president's men. And let's see what they all have in common. Let's see what kind of picture all these little puzzle pieces make. Do they fit with each other? This is more than just having a few things in common. These are fundamental principles. And some of the things that we've, we've told you have been denied or dismissed over and over again. But when they're separate, when they're separate, it's easier to believe the denial. But when you start looking to them as a collection, you start to see, wait a minute, I don't believe that. For instance, Van Jones, when he was caught on tape, 9-11 truther, and he had a 9-11 truther, you know, his signature on a list, his excuse. He said he just didn't know what he was signing. He was tricked into signing it. And he's, he thought he was helping 9-11 families. Got that? Uh, John Holdren. John Holdren. His radical views on forced abortions and sterilizing the drinking water were under scrutiny. His staff said, this is material that's, I mean, it came out in the 1970s, and it was, it's all academic. Okay, you could believe that, and many senators and many people in America still do. But then we found this guy yesterday who has the same kind of views, okay? When, when you had Barack Obama sitting in a pew with a pastor for 20 years, that was, that was a Jew-hating, um, crazy guy, hates America. Nobody wants to think that the President of the United States has any of those views. So he says, I, I wasn't aware of those statements. Now, I find that hard to believe that Jeremiah Wright can open his mouth for 20 seconds without saying something crazy, let alone 20 years. But again, by itself, you believe it. By itself, you might buy it. By itself, you might buy it. When Anita Dunn, Anita Dunn said, you know, 
Chairman Mao was the philosopher she turned to most. She said she was joking in attempt uh, at irony, but it clearly fell flat. Okay, if it was one, it was a novel. It was uh, smears. I didn't hear it. I, I didn't see it. Uh, it was a joke. It was just academic. Uh, we were just speaking. Uh, no, we didn't mean it that way. Oh, it's out of context. Oh, these guys who are saying this are just trying to destroy me. I mean, the people involved, it's always the same thing. See, if these radical ideas are just open-mindedness, well, then, then where, where are all the other ideas on the other side of things?